Hey, Westside families, uh, Mr. Flores here, one of the Bible teachers at Westside Christian High School. I, I just wanted to send out a word of encouragement as I read through a psalm, and I am going to be using the Word Biblical Commentary to provide some structure and some ideas and comments on this passage, which I find to be helpful um, to read the scriptures and to find out what someone else has said about it. I know um, almost everybody uh, I've talked to, we're all going through very challenging times. Um, if it was our choice, we probably would want to go back to 2019 or just fast forward to 2021. It is always hard to live in the moment in the midst of a storm. I get that. Um, and so that's why I have a desire to help you guys out in this practical way. Um, something that I have uh, chosen to do with my family is to go through the Psalms and to read a Psalm, to think about it together, to, to pray, a, uh, pray it in as a family, and then to sing a Bible verse song. Um, I'll do all of that except uh, sing a Bible verse song for you. Um, so I, I will go through this psalm, I'll, I'll read it, I'll provide some comments, and hopefully that can be a source of encouragement for your family as you're going through um, all the various trials that the scriptures say shape our character. And so this week I was uh, reading some news, um, catching up on some pop culture, and Kelly Clarkson is going through a really hard time. Um, the first American Idol, all the way back in 2002. Um, she says that her life recently has been a little bit of a dumpster. Personally, it's been a little hard the last couple of month months, she says. She has filed for divorce recently and is going through um, very challenging times in the midst of everything else. She says, I've been talking to friends that have been through divorce, she added. I don't know how people go through that without having some kind of outlet because it is the worst thing ever for everyone involved. And she continues, she says she's starting a, a new album and she says this is the most personal one she's ever released. So she's digging deep into her emotions and her heart. And she says, the whole record is basically every emotion you experience from the beginning of a relationship to the end of what it is now or where it is now. And it's been very therapeutic for me. And so something that I appreciate about Kelly Clarkson here is her ability to allow herself to get involved in her emotions, what she's going through, what she's feeling um, and what she says specifically is that this next album, all the lyrics, and it's going to reflect that to a certain degree. And I, I remember when one of my favorite bands, a uh, little cheesy here, Relying K, came out with uh, an album after his breakup. And um, Forget and Not Slow Down is the name of that album. Wonderful album, if you like Relying K or punk rock like I, I do. And he does the same thing. He digs deep into his emotions. And what I appreciate about the Psalms, uh, what I appreciate about David and many other um, authors of the Psalms, they dig deep into their emotions and they put that out there for the reader. And, and the Psalms allow us, like we would be able to relate to Kelly Clarkson or Matt Thiessen from Relan K or, or anybody else that has really dug into their emotions. Um, the Psalms kind of give us a window into how we, as God's creation, ought to respond to various trials when they come our way. And so this psalm, Psalm chapter 1, it, it expresses with remarkable clarity the polarity of persons and their destinies. And so the psalmist is kind of digging into his heels into reality as he's surveying his scene. He's looking around saying, okay, here's, here are righteous people and here are wicked people. And he is reflecting upon that in his own life and his own journey. And so the, the psalm is broken down into three sections. Um, and the three sections would be the solid foundation of the righteous, and that's uh, verses one through three. And the second section would be the impermanence of the wicked, and that's verses four and five. And the third section is a contrast of the righteous and the wicked. 
And so what we learn in the first section, the solid foundation of the righteous, we see the we see avoidance and we see active participation. And so the commentator in the word biblical commentary states that the first few things that uh, are avoided here are kind of summarizing a big idea. Just avoid wickedness at all costs. So it starts out by saying, blessed is the man. And that word blessed can be translated like happy. You, you have a, a certain quality of happiness about you when this happens. So blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. Okay, so those are the things that he avoids. But contrast, his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, he meditates day and night. And so here, right out the gate, the psalmist is saying, avoid. And, and, and this is kind of just natural. Like if you see a caution sign out there on the edge of a cliff and it says caution, don't get close or else you might fall, you're going to avoid that. Or if you see some oncoming traffic and you see the lines there that divide the, the, uh, the different lanes and whatnot, you're not going to challenge that and go in the opposite lane. You'll avoid that. And so there are all sorts of things in life practically that we avoid. The psalmist here is bringing to our attention things that we ought to avoid that will result in our true happiness. And so that's kind of the first step here is to avoid this over here, the wicked, and to have an active participation in delighting in God's law. Because he says, but his delight, his delight, something that I can do is in the law of the Lord. And here's the active participation. On his law, he meditates day and night. So I have an active role in the result of happiness in my own life. There's something that I can do. And the psalmist prescription here is, man, just meditate on the law of the Lord and do that day and night. Okay, and, and here is kind of what happens if you do that. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season. And its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. So it's in its season, meaning, you know, you're not going to know when that specifically happens. Um, it's in the right time. And the scripture uses that phrase or that word multiple times throughout the entire Bible, both Old and New Testament. It's at just the right time, at the opportune time. And it's reminding us that it's not something that we stress about. It's, it's just a way of life. If I continue to meditate on the law of the Lord, the result is going to be happiness, and that's going to happen at just the right time in its season. And I'll never forget this. Years ago, I had a pastor, and I've heard it said a couple of different ways. Um, you never walk by an apple tree that's straining to produce apples. And, and what he meant by that is he, he never saw a tree um, just really frustrated about photosynthesis or really frustrated about making sure the it's going to gather the right waters or really frustrated and anxious about producing fruit. It simply extends its leaves. It allows the light to penetrate in just the right way for photosynthesis to occur. It extends its roots. It goes deep. It allows the water and the nutrients and minerals to be gathered and collected so that at just the right time, it produces fruit. And it doesn't stress out about that. It's not like you ever walk by an apple tree um, and you see this apple tree with this frown face like, oh, I'm just trying to produce fruit. Oh, almost there. And then all of a sudden fruit pops out. No, it's just, it's at just the right time. And, and, it's, and, and, it, and it is in its right season. And so I love that description here. You'll be like that tree as well. At just the right time, you will bear fruit. And then this goes into the second section here, the impermanence of the wicked. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. And what they're saying here is there's no real substance in the life of the wicked. Um, 
And you can think and imagine it's harvest time. You have your winnowing fork and the way that you make sure you get the grain and separate it from the harvest is digging that winnowing fork into the harvest there. And, and then you throw it up into the air and then the wind comes by and it blows the chaff away and the good stuff falls to the ground. And the psalmist is reminding us, don't be like the wicked because there, there is no real substance or worth to that kind of a life. And so the result of that, therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. And so that's a choice. The psalmist is presenting through observation of his world, the righteous and the wicked. He's saying, well, what is it that you want? What, it, what result do you want in the end? Do you want substance? Well, that's going to take active obedience in meditating on the law of God rather than simply going with the flow of the wicked, which it's going to produce something, but it's chaff and it's just going to get blown away in the end. How sad is that? But he's presenting a choice for us because this is active participation on our end. God forbid we live a life with no substance. And so that brings us to our third section, a contrast of the righteous and the wicked. He says, for the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. God knows the way of the righteous. He understands that thoroughly. And I think we see that most clearly in the scripture through the life of Christ. He understands the life of the righteous. He understands what it's like to suffer. He understands what it is like to go through troubling times. He gets that. Jesus understands that. And thank goodness we have a high priest that sympathizes with us in our weakness. He knows what we're going through. He knows the struggles that we have. He knows what's on offer for us each day, the life of the righteous, the life of the wicked. And he has demonstrated for us choosing life. He has done that for us. So the Lord truly knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish, sadly. This was presented in the teaching of Christ, um, popularly known as the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. And Jesus presented the kingdom of God. He, he has something on offer for us. And um, the kingdom of God represented the way of life associated by a narrow gate. And this narrow gate, again, is a choice. Am I going to choose to follow the teaching of Christ? Interestingly enough, Christ pointed out the present reality and the future reality of a response to his message. And in practical terms, um, really, I can achieve both a happy result presently now and forever. Um, I get these daily updates and it's a devotion from Dallas Willard. And they're little just excerpts from his book and they're really short and sweet and to the point. And today's um, really fit in with this message here. And the question is, how should you take care of yourself? And here's the little excerpt, I'll read it for you. When Mickey Mantle was dying of diseases brought on by a life of heavy drinking, he said that he would have taken better care of himself had he only known how long he was going to live. Sadly, he would have taken better care of himself if he, if he had that magic eight ball, if he knew his destiny, if he knew exactly when his life was going to be over he would have taken better care of himself. You know, during this time in this pandemic, how are you caring for yourself? When you go through tragedy, like I began the message here with Kelly Clarkson, going through something so hard, or one of my favorite artists, Matthew Thiessen, as he went through something challenging himself, how is it that you care for yourself? And do you know that it, you know, time is a, a big part of, of that equation? The amount of time that we either care for ourselves or not care for ourselves is a big part of the end result of either us being righteous or wicked or just the end result of being happy. So I, I kind of like this example here. Mickey Mandel drank hard in his life and it didn't go well. 
He continues, he gives us a profound lesson. How should we take care of ourselves when we are never to cease? Now, I love how Dallas Willard asks that question, which echoes the, the commentator here of this psalm, the idea presented here, and especially attached to the teaching of Christ. Christ wasn't just talking about this um, willy-nilly decision that you make in your heart, like, oh yeah, I believe in Jesus, and then you can live however you want for like 50 years and then die, and then you get your ticket to go to heaven. His teachings um, bear great weight on our current situation, in our current present situation. And so I like that. How should we take care of ourselves not to just get through this moment? Because we are never going to cease, uh, never. And, and that's kind of like, a whoa, that kind of gets my attention. That wakes me up to some degree. Jesus shows his apprentices how to live in light of the fact that they will never stop living. This is what his students are learning from him. Do you know, do I know that we will never stop living? The path that we choose in this life, as presented here in the psalm, either the path of the righteous or the path of the wicked, that is going to be our eternal destination. And my prayer for us as we're going through really challenging times um, is that we don't go through this alone. Kelly Clarkson said it's therapeutic to write about it. She's kind of writing her own psalms, but it's also therapeutic for her to do that in community and to do that with a group of people. And my prayer for us is that we do not respond to this situation that we're going through, pandemic, racial tension, or now this, the most recent fires, that we don't go through these moments, these events, these traumatic events in isolation, but that we reach out, as Kelly Clarkson says, and we, we truly find rest with other people as we share the burden with each other, as the scriptures even talk about. So um, thank you for uh, listening to this. Um, if you need any help in any way, hopefully you have someone to reach out to. If you don't have someone to reach out to, I highly encourage you to reach out to your Westside community. We are here for you. We want to pray for you. We want to get through this moment together with you guys. Um, and so I have a, a set of questions here that perhaps you and your family can ask together and you can pray with each other and um, hopefully they can be instructive for you and encouraging. So here are some questions to think about together. What am I doing to delight in the law of God? It's a simple practical question. The psalmist says to do that, to delight in the God uh, law of the Lord, but what are you doing specifically to do that? We would suggest read through the scriptures, find a devotion, read a devotion, um, listen to pastors online, uh, find some way that causes your heart to delight more in the law of God. Okay, so what am I doing to delight in the law of God? Second question, how can I help my friends and family to delight in the law of God? So if it's true that you yourself are delighting in the law of God, part of the goal of following Christ is to look around yourself and, and to ask, well, who else can I help to delight in the law of the Lord? So as a family, maybe you can um, ask yourselves that question and then answer it together and say, who as a family can we help delight in the law of God? And another question, so this kind of relates. Do, do I know someone going through a hard time um, that I could reach out to? So think about our current events. Think about the pandemic, COVID-19. Think about racial tensions. Um, do you have friends of, of color who are going through a really hard time right now? Um, do you have friends or family that are, have lost anything in the fires or have had to evacuate? Again, that question is more practical and relates to the second question that I ask. And then the, the last question, who am I going to encourage this week to be like a tree? So it's one thing to recognize someone going through a hard time, but I think it's the, the job, the duty of the Christ follower to, to encourage someone 
not just to sympathize with what they're going through, although that is a bridge and that's important to build a connection with somebody, but then how can I encourage them to be like this tree? Maybe God has placed on my heart a, a Bible verse or a passage or scripture that I can encourage them with. So thank you so much for spending this time with me. God bless you guys, and hopefully we'll, we'll see uh, each other sometime soon.